on World News Tonight. Krakatoa erupts. Indonesia's Krakatoa volcano erupts and spews ash three kilometers into the sky. Weather warning. Expert warns the global population to take cover as the planet enters its El Nino phase. More trouble. The Red Cross warns that landmines are polluted and dispersed by floodwaters in Ukraine are surging downstream. And double duckies. Two giant rubber ducks debut in Hong Kong to spread double luck. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and this is World News. Now leading tonight is on the eruption of Indonesia's Anakakato volcano, belching a column of ash more than three kilometers into the sky. The volcanic island emerged from the sea at the beginning of the last century from the crater formed after the 1882 eruption of Mount Krakatoa, one of the deadliest and most destructive in history. Anak Krakatoa, which means child of Krakatoa, spewed thick ash over the strait that separates the islands of Java and Sumatra. Anak Krakatoa's status was at the second highest warning level after authorities raised it in 2022 following a sharp rise in volcanic activity. Its crater partly collapsed in 2018 when a major eruption sent huge chunks sliding into the ocean, triggering a tsunami that killed more than 400 people and injured thousands. Indonesia, a Southeast Asian archipelago nation, sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, where the meeting of continental plates cause high volcanic and seismic activity. The country has nearly 130 active volcanoes. Air quality in parts of the U.S. remain at hazardous levels due to smoke coming from the massive wildfires in Canada. President Joe Biden called the Canadian wildfires a stark reminder of the effects of climate change. For the second straight day, parts of eastern United States have been covered in fine dust and smoke caused by massive wildfires in Canada. The air quality in the country's capital reached at dangerous levels, with millions refraining from outdoor activities while stocking up on essential items such as masks. According to the Washington Post on Thursday, Washington, D.C. issued a purple warning, the second worst on the air quality index. A purple warning means conditions are very harmful to the health of all people, regardless of age or if they are suffering from a respiratory illness. The D.C. mayor's office says poor air conditions could get worse and asked people to refrain from going outside as much as possible. It also asked people to wear N95 or KN95 grade masks if they needed to go outdoors. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday said in a statement that the devastating wildfires burning in Canada are another stark reminder of the impacts of climate change. He added that millions of Americans are now experiencing the effects of smoke resulting from the devastating wildfires. Biden also said that he held phone talks with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, noting that the U.S. agreed to provide additional support necessary to accelerate firefighting efforts, including in Quebec, where fires in the area are having a direct impact on the U.S. He went on to say that the Environmental Protection Agency is monitoring air quality and providing important updates adding that he instructed Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg to preemptively manage any impact on air traffic due to deteriorating air quality. The planet could see hotter weather this and next year as the El Nino weather system has begun. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said that the weather phenomenon arrived one or two months earlier than usual. It's likely to bring drought to Australia, increase rain in the southern United States and lead to weakened monsoon seasons in India. After three years dominated by the cooler La Nina weather pattern, El Nino is now underway, according to a U.S. climate monitoring agency. The last time a strong El Nino was in full swing was 2016, when the world saw its hottest year on record. And scientists say this year looks particularly worrying. With the continued warming since the 2016 El Nino, um, could lead to 2024 um, being one for the record books. El Nino is a natural climate pattern born out of unusually warm waters in the eastern Pacific though scientists are not entirely sure what kicks off the cycle. It's likely to yield extreme weather later this year, from tropical cyclones to heavy rainfall. 
Tom DiLiberto is a climate scientist with the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. El Nino is not like a storm. El Nino is not going to hit you on Tuesday. El Nino is all about changing the kind of patterns that weather plays in. So when we talk about a moderate or strong event, that's basically saying that El Nino has a stronger influence on creating the atmospheric patterns that might stay around a while for a period of time. During an El Nino, the southern U.S. sees cooler and wetter weather, while parts of the U.S. West and Canada are warmer and drier. Hurricane activity usually falters in the Atlantic, but in the Pacific, tropical cyclones get a boost. Australia usually endures extreme heat, drought and bushfires. Parts of Central and South America may experience heavy rainfall. The Horn of Africa could see a reprieve after five consecutive failed rainy seasons. Weather anomalies can be more extreme depending on where waters are warmest, making things drier or wetter in certain regions. The oceans are already so warm. The Atlantic is very, very warm. Um, the Western Pacific is pretty warm. The Indian Ocean is really warm. So that in and of itself, even if there wasn't an El Nino, would mean that there's an increased risk for coral bleaching in tons of different places around the globe. There's also a concern that global sea surface temperatures could supercharge extreme weather. During the last El Nino, anchovy stocks off Peru's coast crashed, and nearly a third of the corals on Australia's Great Barrier Reef died. While climate change is doubling down on the impacts from El Nino, whether climate change influences the phenomenon itself is less clear. Most of the, the warmest years on record that we've seen in the past have happened due to the influence of El Nino because it gives that little bit extra push onto um, the global temperatures on top of the warming that we're already causing due to human-caused climate change. U.S. President Biden and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak signed the Atlantic Declaration, a first-of-its-kind economic partnership on artificial intelligence and other economic commercial relations. We don't have a closer ally. U.S. President Joe Biden welcomed British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to the White House on Thursday and agreed to deepen close economic ties in what they called the Atlantic Declaration, pledging to accelerate the clean energy transition and strengthen critical supply chains. Thank you for welcoming me to the White House. The agreement between the two countries was described as a first-of-its-kind economic partnership that mapped out future cooperation on issues such as artificial intelligence and other economic and commercial relations. Later, the two leaders described other areas of cooperation in a joint press conference, including their continued support for Ukraine, with Sunak sending a strong signal to Russian President Vladimir Putin. There is no point trying to wait us out. We're not going anywhere. We will be here for as long as it takes. And hopefully that will speed up the calculation in his mind that he should withdraw his forces. Biden underscored support for Ukraine's long-term security and deterring aggression after the war ends. And we're advancing this goal by providing them the support Ukraine needs now on the battlefield and helping them strengthen uh, their military over the long term. The fact of the matter is that I believe we'll have the funding necessary to support Ukraine as long as it takes. Biden and Sunak's meeting was the fourth in as many months for the two leaders. Thursday's discussion also focused heavily on ensuring the safety of AI and other emerging technologies, something Biden stressed needs attention. We're going to do more on joint research and development to ensure the future we're building remains fundamentally aligned with our value set in both our countries. Biden and Sunak also agreed to launch a new civil nuclear partnership as part of their clean energy cooperation which will include setting up new infrastructure over the long term and cutting reliance on Russian fuel. Cuba has agreed to allow China to build a spying facility on the island that could allow the Chinese to eavesdrop on electronic communications across the southeastern U.S. A report from the Wall Street Journal on Thursday said China has reached a secret deal with Cuba to establish a spy facility on the island nation. But the Biden administration was quick to cast doubt on the report. Here's Pentagon Press Secretary and Air Force Brigadier General Pat Ryder. I've seen that, that reporting. I can tell you based on the information that we have that that is not accurate, uh, that, that we are not aware of China and Cuba 
developing any type of spy station. Separately, I would say that the relationship that those two countries share is something that we continuously monitor. Uh, I would say that, that, as you've heard us say many times, China's activities both in our hemisphere and around the world, any concerning activities are something that we will continue to, to watch closely. Um, but in terms of that, that particular report, uh, no, it's not accurate. Cuba's government also cast out on the report, with Vice Foreign Minister Carlos Fernandez de Casio calling it a U.S. fabrication meant to justify Washington's decades-old economic embargo against the island. A spy installation in Cuba, which is roughly 100 miles from Florida, would allow China to gather electronic communications from the southeastern U.S., which houses many U.S. military bases. Beijing would also be able to monitor ship traffic, the newspaper reported, citing U.S. officials familiar with classified intelligence. That is a concern of Jagannath Sankaran, an assistant professor in the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas, who conducts research on China's military. According to the Journal Report, China and Cuba have reached an agreement in principle, with China to pay Cuba several billion dollars to allow the eavesdropping station. A spokesperson for the Chinese embassy in Washington said it was not aware of the case and couldn't give a comment right now. The journal said U.S. officials declined to provide more details about the proposed location of the spy station or whether construction had begun. The reported deal comes as Washington and Beijing are taking tentative steps to soothe tensions that spiked after a suspected Chinese high-altitude spy balloon crossed the United States before the U.S. military shot it down off the East Coast in February. Thursday's report could also raise questions about a trip to China that U.S. officials say Secretary of State Antony Blinken is planning in coming weeks. Washington's top diplomat had earlier scrapped the visit over the spy balloon incident. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Now the Red Cross is warning that landmines uprooted and dispersed by floodwaters surging downstream from the breached Kharkovka Dam could pose a grave danger to civilians for decades to come. As one official said, in the past we knew where the hazards were, now we don't. The flooding from the destruction of the Nova Kharkovka Dam in Ukraine is continuing to spread, now hitting the city of Mykolaiv. And the Red Cross is warning that one particular side effect of this disaster could pose an incredible danger to civilians even decades from now. <laughs> Unexploded landmines and other munitions that have been swept away by the flood and now could literally be anywhere. They could still be in minefields or they could be in the middle of roads, someone's backyard or in their own home. As one Red Cross official put it, the only thing we do know is that the mines are somewhere downstream. Andrew Mathewson is with the Halo Trust, an NGO that clears land mines, and has been working in the Nikolaev region. The immediate threat to us and our staff and civilians is the fact that mines might move, and that will, you know, that will lead to the to the need for us to resurvey these areas, remark them as minefields. Um, and, and obviously re, reorganize ourselves in terms of how to approach the clearance problem. Beyond that, the mines might not only move, but they might also fluctuate in terms of the way they're laid, which poses another risk. Meanwhile, evacuations from the flood are ongoing, but the fighting around it hasn't stopped. Ukrainian authorities said Thursday that a civilian was killed and several others wounded in what they called targeted strikes by Russian shelling in one of the cities hit by the flood, Kherson. Russia also accuses Ukraine of shelling rescue workers in parts of the region that it occupies. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been charged over his handling of classified documents after he left the White House. Mr. Trump faces seven charges, including unauthorized retention of classified files. The charges are not yet public. Former U.S. President Donald Trump was told to show up at a federal court next Tuesday in Miami as he faces a second indictment, this time over his handling of classified materials after he left the White House. 
and this marks the first time in American history a former president has been indicted on federal charges, adding to his legal troubles as he runs for president again. The indictment remains under seal. Sources say Trump faces at least seven criminal counts in the federal case. It's illegal for the government to comment on grand jury matters that haven't been made public. However, Trump's legal team would have been told what those seven charges were as part of his summons. Could not immediately learn what specific charges Trump was facing, and his attorneys did not immediately respond for a comment. Trump, who leads the GOP in the polls, targeted the Biden administration in a video posted on Thursday on his social media platform. I'm an innocent man. I'm an innocent person. Our country is going to hell and they come after Donald Trump, weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI. Around 100 documents bearing classified markings were recovered from Trump's Palm Beach home last August. The Justice Department was looking into whether Trump unlawfully removed them when he left office in 2021 and whether he or others tried to block the government's investigation. On Thursday, reporters challenged Joe Biden about the Justice Department's independence in relation to the case. I have never once, not one single time, suggested to the Justice Department what they should do or not do or else to bring in a charge or not bring in a charge. I'm honest. Following news of the indictment, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, other Republicans such as Ron DeSantis and billionaire Elon Musk tweeted messages to support Trump. Hofstra University constitutional law professor James Sample says it's likely federal prosecutors will bring charges that are serious and easy to prove. But he also said that doesn't mean Trump's poll numbers will suffer. And in fact, it was striking to witness that when he was indicted in New York on the charges arising out of the Stormy Daniels uh, affair and the, the, the classification of those expenditures, his poll numbers actually improved. Now, is that causation or is it merely correlation? It's very, very difficult to say. But one thing that we have uh, learned over the last couple of years in particular is that the normal rules, the normal political assumptions that apply seemingly don't apply in the same way to Donald Trump. Trump is the first former president in U.S. history to face criminal charges. That's after he pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records linked to hush money paid to porn star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. He also faces a much more serious criminal investigation by a county prosecutor in Georgia relating to his efforts to undo his 2020 election loss in that state. Now, crypto exchange Binance US said it is suspending US dollar deposits and that its banking partners are preparing to pause fiat dollar withdrawal channels as early as June 13th. The US arm of the world's largest crypto exchange Binance announced on Thursday it is suspending US dollar deposits, days after US regulators sued the company and its CEO. In a notice it tweeted, the platform said its banking partners are preparing to pause via dollar withdrawal channels as early as next Tuesday. Binance said it has become what it called a target of aggressive tactics by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in its pursuit of, quote, an ideological campaign against the American digital asset industry. The company added it is taking proactive steps to transition to a crypto-only exchange for the time being. Trading, staking, deposits and withdrawals in crypto would remain fully operational. On Monday, the SEC filed a lawsuit against the exchange and its founder, Cheng Peng Zhao, accusing them of misleading investors. Just a day later, the watchdog also sued Coinbase, the largest cryptocurrency platform in the US, alleging that it was operating as an unregistered exchange. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. The reopening of Iranian diplomatic missions in Saudi Arabia is a hopeful sign that the two countries can resume constructive relations under the mediation of China. Iran reopened its embassy in Saudi Arabia after seven years of closure, nearly three months after the two countries agreed to mend broken bilateral ties under a China broker deal. European low-cost airline Wizz Air said it would make a net profit of 350 million to 450 million euros in its current financial year, as strong demand for travel and its expanding fleet put it on track for growth. General Motors announced that it will join Ford in adopting Tesla's North American China 
charging standard for electric vehicles. The announcement boosted GM and Tesla shares after the market closed. Tens of thousands of revellers packed the streets of Tel Aviv for the Israeli city's annual Pride Parade in support of the LGBTQ plus rights. Ahead of Japan's planned release of contaminated wastewater from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear plant in the summer, some South Korean shoppers are buying salt and seafood in bulk to store at home and retailers are stockpiling in fear of supply shortage. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can always rewatch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. And finally, we leave you tonight with a pair of rubber ducks making a splash in Hong Kong's Victoria Harbour, part of an art installation dubbed Double Ducks by a Dutch artist who says he hopes the ducks will bring luck to the city. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.